Today I'm going to be talking about the golden ratio and uh, it's quite an interesting number. It is an irrational number but unlike some other irrational numbers that you are used to, this number is not transcendental. Um, numbers such as pi which you are probably very familiar with it is transcendental um, because and also uh, the number e is transcendental um, it's been proven by a mathematician that e is transcendental and uh, pi can be written algebraically uh, or e can be written algebraically uh, by pi which proves that if e is not uh, if e is transcendental, that means that pi must also be transcendental. So those two are transcendental irrational numbers. Now, some other numbers, such as the square root of 2, those numbers are indeed irrational, but they are not transcendental. And that is because the square root of 2 can be written algebraically as um, 2 to the power of 0 0.5. So... Um, the golden ratio can also be written algebraically as a square root, and I'll, I'll reveal what it is. So it is not just some sum of an infinite series or something like that. It, it, it is, it is, um, it has its own ways of being written, but it is ultimately, um, it can be written algebraically as um, a number, oh, an integer to the power of a fraction uh, plus some other digits. So it can be written um, algebraically without the use of um, irrational, like uh, transcendental symbols. So I, I'll just t talk to you briefly about the golden ratio. So you can see this shape here. What, 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 what the basic fundamental thing about the golden ratio, it is that A divided by B gives you the golden ratio and you're probably wondering hang on a minute it's irrational how can uh, it be written as a fraction now of course it's not really these numbers in the fraction are not whole numbers so that will give you a bit of relief um, how this works so a divided by b is equal to um, a a plus b divided by a so that is basically what the golden ratio is about. So in other words, this rectangle here, uh, I'll go through it in a different color. I'll go through it in red and with a smaller stroke. Okay, so this rectangle, just backspace this bit. Um, so this rec no. Um, okay. This rectangle that goes here, the ratio of the sides is the same as the ratio of the rectangle that should go from there to there. Now obviously you're thinking, hang on a minute, this side is much longer than this side, and this side is the same. Now guys, this side is going to, it's going, it's, it, there, it's a common scale factor. It's, uh, so this side will correlate with this side, and this side is going to correlate with this side. So as you can see, um, it would make sense that the ratio A plus B divided by A, which is the big square, would be equal to the ratio of um, a, which is this long side, divided by B by the short side. So that is what the golden ratio is about. It's it's, it's such that this will all work out. And here's this is a symbol we use for the golden ratio. It's like we don't like, the, the capital isn't used that much. It's like an I with an O through it. There you go. Um, now I'm going to prove to you guys um, that this it that it is actually written. Um, it does. It, it's not like pi where it has to be written. In its symbol form, it can be written as um, a square root of a number. Uh, well, yeah, you guys know what I mean. Um, that's what it's all about. I, I'm going to prove that to you guys. So, well, let's think about what do we know? What do we know for starters? Um, we know uh, that A divided by... Let's, let's give the 
far a little bit bigger. We know that A divided by B, that is a ratio. That'll give us a number. And the gold ratio is that number. So we can call that, um, let's donate a letter because this looks like an I and an O. I might pick I. No. O? No, they both look, okay. I'm going to go with P because that's just, that's just a good symbol to use. Uh, a plus divided by B is equal to P, which is also equal to um, A plus B divided by A. Now I have checked this proof before. I, I checked this. Um, I checked this proof a long time ago. Then I try. I did it by memory today. I thought I'll go through it today. Okay. So let's see. Um, what we can do, you can see from here. Uh, let now obviously if a over b is equal to p then um whenever to find out what p is it we, we know that when p let's say take when b is one obviously a is going to equal p right i'll just copy this over paste that in um, yeah, so that's another equation. So we know that when p equals uh, when a, b equals one, p is equal to a. So we know that we can just so we can really re realize that p p divided by one, and so we can just say p is equal to um, p plus one uh, divided by p. Okay, and let's copy this over to our proof list um okay then what we can do is we know that oh uh we can we can sort of multiply out our is that right, is that right? yeah oh yeah i forgot to put the division there it has to be divided by not times you get a bit confused put that division in there um let's multiply the brackets so you get uh p squared is equal to p plus one uh, just bring everything over to one side, you get minus, minus, equals zero. Um, and let's look completing the square. Let's just copy this over to our proof list. So let's complete the square. Uh, so we know that the coefficient is a half. So let we got to do a half squared is a quarter. So plus one over four minus 1 over 4, minus 1, then let's uh, do that, p plus a half squared uh, is going to equal, you can bring these over, so it'll, it'll be um, 1 and 1 quarter, which we can cancel out into 5 quarters, obviously. Um, let us Divide, let, let us uh, square root both sides, so you get p plus a half is going to equal, now what's the square root of 5, it's, it's, it's not a square number, so we'll just do square root of 5 divided by 2, obviously, um, subtract a half from both sides, oh, why, why did they do that, yeah, it should be minus a half, guys, because uh, obviously it was minus p, so that should be minus there. Uh, yeah, and then just add a half to both sides. So you get the square root of 5 uh, plus a half, which and we can just bring that out as 1 this is over 2. So there you have it. We have written this number. I can, this, this is our final proof, guys. So there we go. There's, there's all our, the proof we need. And we've just written this number as this. So let's backspace all of that. Uh, okay. What we can do is we can um, take this. I'm, I'm just going to move all of this over, guys. Yeah, so we know that. there. Yeah, so what we're actually just saying guys is that 
No, I left a bit over. No, just leave it, leave it. Okay, so we know we know that this number is equivalent. Yeah, because I'm just gonna uh let's go stroke of three black. It's equivalent. And let's run that over. It would as we saw earlier, it is um the square root of five uh plus one. Uh that's about centered. Uh divided by two. Now don't think all oh, divided by six. Six divided by two, three, it's not because it's square rooted. Uh, I'm just draw that square root and soon. And here we go. No, that's too thick a line. You can't have square roots as thick as that. I'm gonna just delete that. Uh, let's reduce the line to two. Do this right. No line. There we go. So the square root of 5 plus 1 divided by 2 uh, should give you the golden ratio. And that basically, guys, that all that is is just what... It's basically just um, when you have a, what a divided by b is. So it's basically, if you were to take this this distance, it, it's the ratio at which this distance divided by this distance is going to equal uh, this distance divided by this distance. And that's what the that's what the uh, golden ratio is about. And to prove that it is um, irrational, obviously, it is uh, the square root of five. And as you know, the square root of five will return an irrational number because the square root of five cannot be written as um, as a fraction with whole numbers because of all problems you get. Uh, there's some proofs for that, and we know that this no this number is not th this number is irrational, but at the same time it's also tra uh, not transcendental, unlike pi d. But like square root of two, square root of three, and specifically the square root of five, so you get uh, you get um, you can write it easily as five to the power of not point five, all divided by two plus one half, which is. It is written algebraically with no irrational symbols used, so as a result, it proves that uh, this golden ratio is not transcendental. It is irrational, however, because it's, it's, the proof goes something like if m divided by n equals uh, p, then um, square root of 5, rather, so I'll say f. Uh, I think it yeah, so we know m squared divided by m squared. So it can be written then as uh, like that. So something like that, guys. So that is what it's about. Which so if if it is if it, if this is in its simplest form, uh, you. And see that, um, yeah. Now, obviously, if it is in its very simplest form, you get no common factors uh, between these these two numbers. The highest, uh, the the highest common factor between those two numbers would obviously be one. Um, and if, if it really did, yeah, there, there's a proof, guys. I can, I'll, I'm going to show you that proof 
It, they did it specifically for the square root of 2. Um, I can show you it on this Wikipedia article. Irrationality of the square root of 5. Is there a zero? I don't know if there's a square root of 5. Okay, here we go. Um, yeah, so so take is this, if it's a fully reduced fraction, which means there are both natural numbers, then the square root of five can has five and minus two m, which is a contradiction. Uh, cross mod cross modeling cancels them alike terms. Yeah, five n squared is equal to m squared, and hence. Which is true by the premise. The second fraction of expression, yeah. So that that's basically what the proof of it's using Fermat's um, infinite descent thing. Um, you you can see that because obviously, uh, if it is like a fully reduced fraction, yeah. That's that. Uh, you, you, I, we can look at this rule of infinite descent in greater detail. Um, so it, it'll show you the square root of the rationality of two. So suppose this is gonna be applied for all the numbers. So suppose the square root of two is equal to p divided by q. Uh, p squared. Yep. So then we have this. So that means two must be. So in the in our case, five must be a factor of p squared and therefore it must also if, if it's going to be a factor of that it it, it 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 must be a factor of the number itself so um because it, it, it it's the prime factorization of p because we contain no twos so because it, it has to be a natural number so it could be written as its prime factorization. So then, um, so in our case, there'd be there'd be fives, fives, and yeah, you, you can obviously see that it would be a factor of, of that way. But then you could also even do the reverse, um, and then you say, hang on a minute, it should be a factor of the other one. Therefore, they, and then you get um, proof that it's irrational due to uh, proof via contradiction. So yeah, it's, it's even got it for K, as we can see. So this, um, yeah. I wonder what it means when it says Q, but I guess it's just a general number it's been using. Yeah. So I, think, I hope you guys can actually see that. See what it is. And see why it doesn't work out. Um, so that proves that it's ir ir it's irrational, but because it can be written, it's not um, transcendental. So that's one fact property of the golden ratio, which is an interesting number. Um, it has this interesting property. It's also find found in Fibonacci numbers, because um, I, I can show you. Obviously, the, the smaller numbers it's not really found in, but like the big numbers it, it's found in a lot. So, for example, take p to, so suppose we actually got to the golden ratio at a point. So, suppose, actually, let's say x, the x unit, um, and suppose it already reached the golden ratio. So then, because the golden ratio is sort of like a limit as far as it's the rate at which it increases. So, um, if we were to have x, or rather, actually, just p, the next unit is going to be, if it's going to be multiplied by p, uh, it's going to be uh, p plus p squared. Uh, yeah. Because that is the uh, next unit. Uh, then we're going to, e it's going to equal. Um, the the golden ratio. It's, that that's going to equal um, 
P cube, isn't it? Cause of that. So now, obviously, you can take out the P's. So you get one and two, and obviously, you see that as you go in the Fibonacci numbers, it would be like that. Cause from one Fibonacci, and when it when it tends to infinity. One Fibonacci number divided by the next Fibonacci number is going to be um, this this constant. So uh, you can be see this here. It's this slope is sort of like going in. You can see from the right to the start, it's just double, double, like adding this bit plus this bit and that little thing, and it'll tend to this the ratio. So it, it it's quite an interesting number. Um, I hope you find it as interesting. It is. Truly remarkable that it can be written as this, as this, but it's quite an easy proof. But all the algebraic proofs are. You do need to know a bit of completing the square though to find it. But that's been a technique that's been around long enough. But yeah, if you know that eventually they do start tending to p. So basically, number x is the next digit is going to be uh, a x times p. And that is going, the following follow on digit is going to have to be uh, obviously the sum of these two, but it's all, it, it'll also be this times p, so it's going to be xp squared. And obviously, you can take out the x's, and again, you get back the d ratio. So that's why, obviously, at the start, it doesn't equal p, it doesn't equal p at all. Um, it doesn't equal p, but that's why you don't get um, this number. But with the really larger numbers, it'll tend. But you need to go to the infinite index plus. See, so if you took the infinite index of the Fibonacci sequence, um, then added that to the infinite plus one index, you would get. Um, if you were to take that, that would equal. If you were to actually rather take the infinite index and divide that by the infinite minus one index, you would get this ratio perfectly. Uh, it's, it's, really, it's really interesting.